You are listening to WNCW 88.7. Down the hall in Studio B, my name is Laura Blackley. Pleased to welcome Soul Driven Train from Charleston, South Carolina. How's it going, guys? It's good. It's good to be back. Oh, what's up, y'all? Joel, can you tell me who this, um, well, it sounds like a choir of monks you've got back in you up this <laughs> afternoon. Can you tell me who these guys this are? This is the Charleston Men's Chorus here. Deep. <laughs> I've got, we got Rust, Rusty the Champ Cole here on the bass guitar. He's the champ! Hello. Part Hello. Of the, champ. the other Russell in the band, Russell Clark. Set it off, He's on the saxophone and the vocals. Ward Buckeaster over there on the guitar and the trombone later on. Made coffee for the champ. <laughs> He's the, the champ's coffee barista, personal barista. And then on the drum set over there, local boy from Morganton, North Carolina, Wes Powers. He unfortunately does not have a microphone, so I will say he hello in his absence. That's right. So, so you guys are from Charleston. Y'all are playing a show tonight at Got Rocks in Greenville. Is that right? That's right. Celebrating. Is it the forthcoming release of Underdog, or did it just it come just out? It just came out on Tuesday, February 5th. It, it was released, so it's, it's brand new. So how is that? It's very exciting. We've been working on this album for two years now, so or just about two years. So it's good to have it out. We're, we're enjoying it, and people, people seem to be responding to it well. Everybody likes the cover art. So it seems like you guys took a bit of a different approach um, than... The standard, you know, a lot of artists nowadays, they're putting out an album a year, maybe two a year, and you kind of dug right in and took your time. What would be your reason for that? Well, we, we, um, we went into the studio uh, March, like, you know, almost two years ago, and we recorded 15 songs. And um, usually we go into the studio and record a bunch of songs and then throw away a couple of them. And we didn't feel like we wanted to throw any of these away. But we also felt like we didn't want to put out a 15 song album in which some things might just get lost in the shuffle. We've done that before. So we released the Watermelon EP where like the five sort of odd, oddball summertime songs last summer. And then we sat on this for a little bit. Kind of the, the black remaining, sheep that yeah. you can't help but love. Yeah, the Watermelon, yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> you guys had some notable special guests on there, uh, referring to Danielle Howell. I think yeah. there was an American uh-huh. Idol, Idol finalist on there. Yeah, Elise Testone and, Amer- and uh, Danielle Howell had some vocals on the. On the album, yeah, it sounds great. That speaks to that Charleston music scene. It seems like things are really happening down there. Yeah. Russ's mom. Oh, yeah. My mom's in the uh, the choir on guest list. An esteemed, esteemed guest. Hey, Ma. Nice, <laughs> nice. So it seems like you guys kind of split pretty evenly the songwriting and composition. How does that work in, within the context of your band? The way it's worked typically is, um, you know, we'll Ward or myself or Rusty... We'll write a song kind of on our own, have a chord progression and a, you know, a rough outline. Then we'll bring it to the rehearsal space and flesh out everybody's parts. You know, there's, we've got a lot of different colors in our palette, you know, horns or Ward can do the guitar or sometimes there's banjo and mandolin involved, you know, and Wes is very diverse on the percussion as far as, you know, rock grooves or samba or bossing over or whatever. So, yeah, we, it's, a, it's a fun, you know, amalgam. Once, you know, once, once that, the lyric and the, and the general idea is there and then, you know, the whole group kind of. Brings the composition together. They add together. their two cents. Yeah, yeah. So how do you decide? Is it a collective process deciding what to throw away, what to keep? Yeah, that's a painful process for sure. Yeah. It was great this on this album to, to just everybody feel like now there's every, I want everything's I want everybody to hear everything that we did, you know. So that's that's cool. Um, but yeah, for some of the other albums, there's some songs that we never released that were just some of them are clearly like ah yeah everybody agrees you know <laughs> that was yeah. that one should be buried. Uh, I guess that's a little quicker and painless when things get decided that way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so much better. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are staying pretty busy nowadays. About how many shows a year would you say you do? We're a hundred, about 150 shows with Soldier and Train, yeah. And that's been, you guys have been together, I guess, roughly since the early 2000s. Is that right? Yeah. Um, it started in 2000 as sort of a uh, a weekend, you know, kind of college college fun thing. And then in 2005, the fall of 2005 is when we went full time and have been touring Ever since, putting uh, out albums. A couple of lineup changes. A- any plans as far as like what you're looking at five years down the road? Or? Um, we 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 see you know just keep making more more good records and what uh, you see with better haircuts. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, nicer <laughs> shoes. Beards. You know, right, 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 right. right. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like um, one of those journalist types. Got to watch out for those. Had said about this particular band that you guys are really good at projecting the fun that you're having. Yeah. on stage out into the crowd and wanted to know if you had any personal philosophy around that that you've thought about if you're not having fun why are you doing it yeah i'd say if, if in five years we're, we're in here and we're and we're not not still smiling then then tell us to go home and do something <laughs> else you know i won't yeah. do that yeah 
it reminds me of a quote that you guys have up on your website. Uh, there's a quote in there from Tom Robbins, and then it, yeah. it goes into your bio, and it talks about you guys having sonic schizophrenia. And I was wondering if you could explain what that means to you. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, mul multiple personalities <laughs> that we like to inhabit on stage, you know, and, and we're fortunately have, you know, created a, a musical identity that allows us to do that and to wear different hats. Uh, Wes alone has a collection of at least 65 hats. Most of them silly. A couple so, of them stylish. They're all the cleaners, but they... You know, <laughs> shared a hat box with the champ. The, hat, the champ has actually got the hat of the day on today. I don't know if y'all can see that out there in Radio Land, but it's... it's beautiful. I can see it. No, once we, once we post the video, you guys will... Uh, it'll be on full display. Ah, my hair. So, so speaking of hats, you guys just got back from the Virgin Islands. I understand that it must have been pretty arduous. Uh, somebody's got to do it, right? That's right, yeah. It, it, was, it was, you know, sort of a relief... You know, a relief effort on our part, you know, going down there, bringing the music. Is that something that y'all do every year? This is the fourth year running that we've gone down in January. We decided that uh, there's nowhere else really nice to tour in January, so we just kept going south, way south. Yeah, pretty horrible time of the year to be Awful. stuck in the Virgin Islands, too. Awful. All of it, yeah, yeah. all around. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. It's Soul Driven Train, live at WNCW Studio B. I'm going to head on back up the hall to some Danielle Howe. I think you, might, you guys might know her. Yeah.